In this video, we're going to look at how you take a standard plastic handled uh, parang like that and transform it you know, into something which looks a bit nicer with a you know, nice wooden handle designed to fit your palm. And we'll also cover how to do uh, a Kydex sheath for, for the parang as well. And, you know, I'm aware of the fact that a lot of people don't necessarily want to have to carve out a handle or you know, may not have access to the equipment you need, like drills to put your tailing pins in and what have you. And, you know, that, that was another reason for doing this video, because for people in Malaysia, there's another option, which is, you know, to use, uh, you know, to find a workshop where, where you can uh, use their equipment. And an outdoor gear shop in Malaysia, they allow people to do this. In fact, that's where this, uh, you know, this has been done. And uh, Kiong, who's my friend uh, who works there, you know, can also get the handles done for you as well. So in a way, this is a sort of budget way of getting a parang you know, that you like, that fits your specifications of what you want, uh, you know, say, without spending a fortune. A few people have asked me where you buy parangs in Malaysia. So I've just come down to my... Uh, the supermarket and uh, we'll show you because basically in the rural areas you can find parangs pretty much anywhere uh, you know hardware stores are particularly good but here you see we've got uh, like a little range of parangs you set up the camera so not something you'd necessarily find in Tesco's um, but yeah we've got like all sorts of parangs here uh, you can basically take a pick. And this is the idea, is that, you know, if you came to a shop like this and you find a parang and it's one that you just like the, you know, the weight of, um, you know, or the feel of it or the balance, um, you know, you can just pick it up and then you know, rehandle it and make it nicer than it was. These are going for 25 ringgit, so that's about, um, what's that, it's about 80 US dollars. Not the cheapest place to buy them, but... You know, as I say, they're easy to find, and you know, you can just look around and find one that is to your liking. So I'm up here with Stem from the Similai tribe in Lake Burra, and uh, I'm going to get him to re-handle this parang. And then we're going to make some final touches at a workshop in KL, that I'll tell you a little bit more about later on. So this is the parang, just a sort of basic standard parang, you can take the handle off, Hand it over to Stem. <laughs> Stem is going to put a wooden handle on. So I've got the parang blade back from Stem, who's knocked off the, the plastic handle and uh, carved out a wooden handle for it. Done a really good job on that. So while I'm waiting for a chance to go into KL and, and fit this on, I'm just going to tidy up the blade a little bit. Okay, I've tidied up the blade a little bit. Uh, just made it look nice and shiny. Uh, with the handle, originally I wasn't going to put a bolster on, but I decided I actually probably needed it because this is quite a long parang. So uh, what I used was this, which I think came from a vacuum cleaner. But, you know, quite often people just use, um, uh, what, copper pipe. And you want to get a nice ooh, snug fit on this. So, you know, it takes a little bit of time just to, to get it right. Um, but, you know, what that's going to do is support the, uh, the handle here. Um, you know, and hopefully stop it all splitting. The other thing that I've been doing is, um, you know, just uh, oil, starting to oil the handle because what what I've found with um, I use Danish oil or teak oil, and what, one thing is you, you don't want to you want to put it on sort of very gradually. Do you know what I mean? And not try and uh, put on thick layers. That's that's not really what you want to do. You just want to put a very thin layer and let it dry. Yeah, and in the first few layers, you can actually just sand it slightly after putting a, you know, a layer of oil on. You know, and that way you'll get a nice uh, sort of uh, thick coating, which will last. Okay, so I've come to KL to see my friend Kiong. Yeah. <laughs> and check out his shop. I love camping shops, quite dangerous places for me to go to, really. Lots of nice things. But the great thing about this shop is that Kiong's also set up a workshop at the back where we can do Kydex, he's got drills, he's got all sorts of good stuff. And uh, that's where we can uh, get the prime sheet made. Yep, then we, 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 we drew from the, end, the middle of the end of the tank to the middle of the uh, this part here, right through the blade. Uh, okay, so now we put the, the wood handle back. Okay, 
and using this part of the line as a guide then we draw a line on top of the wood thing so now you got uh, a line here yeah you yeah. got a line here so we maybe put a pin there and a second pin here cool. so that's the first in then marker Put back to the tank and to the wood handle, and then before you finish, uh, put the hole through and through. So we got the hole through the first hole through the tank, and we got the brass pin, and then now we got the hole through and through the wood handle as well. So we put them together. So with the, with the first pin inside, we, we, we close this hole so that it doesn't drop out. With the pin in place, then what we'll do is we use the same drill bit to mark the second uh, hole. So what we got is the second hole, we just mark the tank, we remove the, the pin, the first pin, remove the handle. So you can see, we got the, the marking where we'll drill next for the second hole. So for the second uh, uh, pin, we're going to use a nail, which is uh, slightly bigger than the brass pin. Okay, so uh, this is the standard uh, size of uh, how the Kydex sheet will come in. Um, two by two by one, two by one. Uh, this is solid color, um, same as this sample here. Um, black color costs about eighty ringgit a piece without shipping. Um, the orange color uh, in the same size, orange and green is hundred twenty. Um, and for multi color like this, multi cam um, is a hundred eighty ringgit per per sheet. So. We got the Kydex, um, just leave it in there to heat up in the oven. And what we've done is we've applied a layer of masking tape on both sides of the blade, just, just so that when, when you press on it, it's, it's not so tight. Um, we also have a pin here for the drain hole, we have attached it, so later we'll, we'll put it into the press and press all of it together. The Kydex is soft now, so we're going to go for the first press and see what happens. So take it out. We're going to quickly fold it over, bring it to the press. Uh, this is a improvised press because of the shape of the, of the length of the plate. So we have to make a bigger one. Let's open up the press and have a look. So, yeah, that looks good actually. Okay, so this is where we're up to. Good. Open up this uh, uh, a slit here for the blade to come through. What we're going to do is just try to uh, heat up this area so that it loosen up to allow the, the larger portion of this blade to slide out. But in order for us to do that, what we use is a wet piece of cloth uh, to to make sure that it does not affect the other areas uh, of the kydex which are being formed. So just put a wet piece of cloth here. Now we're just opening up the neck, the sheath.
So this is the sheath for the uh, halter fours. I'm just going to piggyback off the main sheath. Okay, so that's the halter fours attached. And now the last step is to put in a, a belt loop at the back. At this the front part, so at the back here, we're going to have this plate sitting here and held on by Chicago screws where Paul wants to put a belt loop around here. So I'm back home and it's time to put the handle on. And the handle, by the way, costs about 30 ringgit. Now you can buy pre-made wood handles for, uh, I think, about 10 ringgit. But, you know, the advantage of uh, having a handle made is you can have it, uh, you know, designed the way you like it and to fit the palm of your hand. Okay, to put the handle on, I've got my two retaining pins. I've clean, uh, cleaned everything up, sanded the wood. You know, very important to get everything clean with epoxy. Um, beer can's very useful for mixing epoxy. Just gonna mix this up, bang all the glue in, bang the pins in, put the bolster on, uh, and then leave it to set for, um, you know, uh, a night and a day, basically. So while we wait for the epoxy to, you know, harden up properly, I've just um, been finishing off the the sheath, putting in a belt loop here, and what I've used for that is just um, a bit of a seat belt, and uh, you know just just sewn it. So you know it, it's got a bit of flexibility, but not too much, which is kind of what you want. Uh, I've also put some Loctite on these um, uh, these screws here, just to make sure they don't come undone, um, and that's about it really. You know these eyelets. The the advantage of these is they give you options to mount, uh, you know, other things onto the sheath to pee back on the sheath, you know, as we've done with the uh, knife sheath. So you know, pretty useful stuff. Okay, so that's the uh, handle epoxied up. Got one retaining pin here, and another one behind the bolster there. And here you can see how the epoxy just fills in, you know, that space there. Just gives it a bit of extra strength. Yeah, last week I was teaching some guys about um, freehand sharpening. You know, they get worried about having all the different, you know, water stones, different grits. You don't need them. This is just a cheap um, chat matter uh, sharpening stone, soft and coarse. Use the soft side. Um, because the thing is, you can do, you, you know, the grit is one factor you can control, but the other is the amount of pressure you put down. So, you know, when you're starting off and, the, you know, if the blade's blunt, you, you know, you might be pressing quite hard. But as you get closer to getting a you know a sharp edge, you can just um, you know, put less pressure down, you know, and that way you can get you know a nice sharp edge on your parang. Okay, so parang project is finished. I mean, in terms of uh, how much it cost, um, basically, actually, let's take the knife out of the equation. Uh, the parang, uh, say, twenty-five ringgit for the parang, thirty ringgit for the handle, for the kydex sheath. You know, if you do it on your own, uh, you know, you're basically looking at around 100 ringgit. Uh, if you want someone like OGM to make it for you, you're going to be looking at another 45, 50 ringgit. So, you know, total um, for, for all of this would be about 180 ringgit, which is about 60 US dollars.